Hi, I'm Zena Beylun and this is Ecoterrorism. The World Health Organization characterizes leptospirosis as a bacterial disease that affects both humans and animals. Why is awareness of this disease so important? We'll find out today with our guest in the studio, Ms. Majd Saleh, an epidemiologist, and our guest by phone, Ms. Suraya Zatar Mawad, president and founder of Animal Pride and Freedom. Ms. Saleh, thanks for joining us today. So before we start a discussion for today, let's take a look at this first report. As natural landscapes become more urbanized and humans mingle with wildlife, opportunities increase for diseases to transfer between species. Recently, scientists found that Botswana's banded mongoose carries a pathogen that can be fatal to humans. This study highlights the importance of identifying diseases in wild species that share habitats with humans. According to the World Health Organization, leptospirosis is a bacterial disease that affects both humans and animals. Humans become infected through direct contact with the urine of infected animals or with a urine-contaminated environment. The bacteria enter the body through cuts or abrasions on the skin or through the mucous membranes of the mouth, nose, and eyes. Person-to-person -person transmission is rare. In the early stages of the disease, symptoms include high fever, severe headache, muscle pain, chills, redness of the eyes, abdominal pain, jaundice, hemorrhages in the skin and mucous membranes, vomiting, diarrhea, and rash. Efforts to avoid the disease include protective equipment to prevent contact when working with potentially infected animals, washing after this contact, and reducing rodents in the areas where people live and work. It is estimated that 7 to 10 million people are infected by leptospirosis a year. The huge number of death causes are not clear, and the disease is most common in tropical areas of the world, but may occur anywhere. On this level, what would happen if the outbreaks may occur in the slums of the developing world? So, Ms. Saleh, as the report mentioned, uh, rodents and other animals basically harbor and spread this disease, and transmission to humans occurs when they come in contact either with water, food, or soil that is contaminated with this infected animal urine or with this urine uh, itself. Mm -hmm. So how does this occur exactly? Well, it depends. If, um, if a person directly um, contacts the water that's already infected with the animal urine, mm -hmm. um, it's either it, the bacteria enters the body either through um, lesions in the, in the body or from the mucous membranes like the eyes and the nose and the mouth. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's the way it's transmitted. Um, the incubation period could be f uh, a week to 15 days. Um, and then as the report mentioned, um, the symptoms are uh, high fever, severe headache, etc. And th the symptoms are very general and they could be mistaken for several other diseases. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's the way it's transmitted exactly. It's either lesions in the body from contact uh, with contaminated water or through the mucous membranes. Mm -hmm. the but once a human being has it, it's, it's not very contagious between humans, human to human yeah, transmission. And it's, it's yeah, rare. it's very, very rare. Mm -hmm. It's still unknown. It could be, con it could be also uh, transmitted through drinking contaminated water. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So why is leptospirosis under-recognized and, and why is it so difficult to tell what exactly it is? Well, you were saying the symptoms. The, yeah, because of the symptoms. The common. symptoms are very common. Mm -hmm. So there's fever, there's muscle pain. Um, and at the end, there's also diarrhea, so it could be confused um, sometimes for uh, the flu. Sometimes it could be like s simple diarrhea. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to tell. Um, yeah, so that's why it's very much underreported. And in some countries, it, it might be double the amount that's actually reported. Mm -hmm. How is it eventually actually found out? Um, Are there well, specific tests? Yes, of course, because it's a bacteria and it could be, it could be uh, tested. Mm -hmm. Are there certain the areas where this is more common, where it's more tested for, where it's recognized as being uh, something that is you well, know, something to test for? Well, it's usually well known in, the, in tropical areas mm -hmm. or subtropical areas, but it was also found once in Central America. It all depends on um, uh, the natural disasters that occur in a specific place. So the tropica tropical areas are more prone to floods and typhoons. And so that's why they have a chance of having uh, leptospirosis more than other places. Mm -hmm. Can you give us some examples of such places, maybe tropical areas that where this is common? Well, for uh, example, not too long ago, there, were, um, there was a typhoon in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, and there were some, a lot of reported leptospirosis cases. Um, there was also some reported deaths. Um, so what happened was, b due to the floods, 
um, the contaminated um, water uh, was mixed with the, the rest of the water and it affected uh, the populations, the um, inhabited areas, mm -hmm. and so um, some people were um, um, were in direct contact with that contaminated water. Mm -hmm. and so was it, it mostly was from drinking this water, or was it perhaps through the, the mucous membranes? I or think the lesions, it was through the lesions and the mucous <coughs> membranes. It was through direct contact mm -hmm. with is the water. There, is it also and that dangerous to the same extent if, if one person is drinking this contaminated water? It's the same thing. Same yeah. thing. As long as the bacteria is inside the body, it's it's there. Mm -hmm. So leptospirosis causes long-term health effects, mm -hmm. and uh, th this might include real renal failure, bleeding and inflammation of the heart muscle, and other heart different disease. types of problems. Uh, so how severe are these effects, both in the short term and in the long term? Well, in the short term, it should be directly treated by uh, antibiotics, and it should be um, the first stages of the diseases. Mm -hmm. So antibiotics should be given directly. Um, the long term are really bad, renal failure and... Um, um, and heart diseases, those are hard to treat mm -hmm. later on. And so um, there's an estimate that 5 to 15 percent of cases uh, who, aren't, who go untreated um, end, lead up to this. Uh, he end up dying or lead to fatal um, mm -hmm. maybe disabilities or, or death. Why mm -hmm. are the numbers so, uh, so inexact? Well, because um, as we mentioned earlier, um, it's not always easy to detect leptospirosis. So it's also a case of reporting. People maybe not knowing that exactly. it, it might actually that's be something so big. That's why reporting is very important. Yes, mm -hmm. that's why surveillance is very important. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what about in terms of the fact that children are particularly vulnerable to serious forms of the disease? Are there certain ways that parents can make sure that their children are not so susceptible to this disease? Yeah, so there's several ways. There's either finding, um, uh, making sure that they're wearing um, um, uh, waterproof clothes like rain boots and uh, rain uh, jackets. In places especially that are particularly season, Yeah, especially in seasons where it rains a lot because in certain places like in, in the Philippines, when it rains, it actually floods. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important to take into consideration the protective um, clothes. Um, that could be a way of helping. Uh, there's also another form that people rely on, lept on leptospirosis prophylaxis. Mm -hmm. um, what happens is they give them drugs to try to prevent them from developing leptospirosis. This usually takes place when in events where there's floods or there is, there's um, expected typhoons mm -hmm. so that people do not get affected with uh, leptospirosis. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you were talking about typhoons uh, earlier and about floods and the fact that you know it, it perhaps increases the incidence of, of cases of lep leptospirosis in different people. Uh, so changing environmental trends in general, including extreme weather patterns, do tend to increase the threat of severe epi epidemics around the world. Yes. So are we seeing increased incidences of leptospirosis just because of this? Um, yes. It could be due to, uh, to global the warming, to yes, climate change. Yes, natural disasters, yes. Mm -hmm. um, even in Central America, once there was a flood, and that also led to increased cases of leptospirosis. leptospirosis. Mm -hmm. It could also be occupational. It's not always uh, due to natural disasters. So people who work in uh, sewage, um, you know, sewage workers, um, um, uh, for example, farmers, because it's also an animal disease. Mm -hmm. And so contacting this, uh, the soil that is contaminated with the uh, contaminated urine could also lead to them having the disease. But those numbers, I think they're very, they're few and they don't always call, cause outbreaks, not like the floods or the typhoons that are uh, prone to leading to out outbreaks. Mm -hmm. Are typhoons and floods the only types of natural disasters you would say are examples of, of climate change uh, that affect uh, leptospirosis cases? Typhoons and floods, um, and it <coughs> could be due to several um, reasons. Maybe sometimes um, um, uh, hurricane, uh, not hurricanes, I'm sorry, earthquakes could lead to floods as well. Mm -hmm. So, but at the end of the day, it's, it's mostly it's water related. Flood, uh, water related, uh, yes. Diseases. And is this common, you would say, in developed countries, or is it mostly a case that, it, that is occurring in developing countries due to perhaps? Well, it so happens that it's in, developing, it's in the developing countries now, like mm -hmm. uh, the tropical areas. They're usually they're developing, and they're more prone to have um, uh, such natural disasters. It so happens. But it's also happened in developed countries like uh, Central America. Mm -hmm. So 
Yeah, it's, 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 it all depends on the natural uh, disasters that take place. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I wanted to mention a few points about uh, how we can prevent uh, leptospirosis. And uh, the one of the first points is that risk factors are appropri appropriately identified and managed. Uh, and if they are uh, done in this way, if they are managed, then leptospirosis is a preventable disease. Yes. Uh, so how can we identify and manage risk factors in an appropriate manner, in your opinion? Um, well, for example, um, uh, the animals who, um, who are at risk of, um, um, of transmi transmitting the disease, they could be um, probably tested. Um, uh, the, the people who work with animals, they could also try to um, wear protective uh, um, equipments to help them uh, not um, be infected. Mm -hmm. um, so the risk factor at the end of the day, it's, it's known. It's, it's contaminated water or soil from a contaminated urine, uh, animal uh, contaminated urine. Mm -hmm. And so it's, um, once that is managed, you know, uh, decreasing the, the chance of the soil or water being contaminated, um, then, and if, the, if eventually they do get contaminated, the people could try to decrease it by wearing protective um, equipment, protective clothing. Mm -hmm. So uh, what about risks at both the individual and community levels? How do you think they should be dealt with? How do you think perhaps awareness should be spread in a more appropriate manner? Yeah. Uh, perhaps uh, there's a different way to target individuals as opposed to targeting the community. What yeah. do you think? Well, it's important that the community knows what the uh, the main symptoms are for leptospirosis. So let's say um, they went swimming sometime because it also could be um, acquired from just recreational swinging, uh, s uh, water sports. Mm -hmm. um, so let's say they did go swimming sometime and they experienced um, a week later, they experience muscle weakness and high fever. They should also know that it might be uh, due to leptospirosis, and they should seek medical care right away because leptospirosis should be um, treated right away. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's important that the people be, uh, be um, uh, aware of this issue. Mm -hmm. that we'll talk a little bit more about uh, prevention and treatment right after the short break, so please stay tuned. In the world of business, numbers tell truth. Investors seek startups and bankers provide loans. Stocks rise and fall. Traders anticipate shipments and cargo ships unload. But we at al News spin the globe to bring you your weekly dose of business news. The crisis of capitalism, the European impasse, the energy shortages, the emerging power of Asia, the economic power of the Arab world, the economic debate, informative, revealing, and progressive. It discusses the economic event of the world. Economic debate where the numbers reveal the truth. Welcome back. So before we continue our discussion for today with Ms. Saleh, please take a look at our second report for today. In this video, we will discuss the symptoms of leptospirosis, how it is treated, and more importantly, how it can be prevented. Leptospirosis is a zoonotic disease, which means it can be transmitted to people from animals. People and dogs are exposed to the leptospira bacteria via contact with infected urine or contaminated water, food, or soil. The bacteria can enter the body by being swallowed through contact with mucous membranes such as eyes, mouth, or nasal passages, or through contact with broken skin. Leptospirosis is found all over the world. 
but is particularly problematic in warm tropical climates. Sewer workers and people who work with animals or on farms are at higher risk for exposure. Many people and dogs contact the leptospira bacteria by drinking or swimming in contaminated water while camping or engaging in outdoor water sports. Symptoms in dogs include fever, vomiting, dehydration, and increased thirst, unwillingness to move, and jaundice. However, some dogs do not show any symptoms. Leptospirosis can progress to severe disease of the kidneys or liver and can be fatal because many of these symptoms are also seen in other more common illnesses, blood and urine tests are also needed for diagnosis. Leptospirosis is treatable in both pets and people, but may require hospitalization. The bacteria are directly treated using antibiotics like penicillin or doxycycline, and additional medications may be used to reduce the symptoms. Intravenous fluids are helpful to reverse dehydration caused by vomiting or diarrhea. The key to effective treatment is prompt medical attention before the bacteria has a chance to damage the kidneys and liver. In order to prevent leptospirosis in your pet, avoid letting them drink or swim in water that is likely to be contaminated with wild animal urine or feces. Actively control the rodent population where your pet may reside and do not allow them to explore in rodent infested areas. Remember to always wash your hands after handling animals or potentially contaminated material. Dogs should be routinely vaccinated against the bacteria. Unfortunately, there are many subtypes of the bacteria, and vaccination against one subtype will not protect against another. So, Ms. Saleh, uh, back to what we were discussing before in terms of prevention and, and, uh, and you know, dealing with leptospirosis perhaps before it occurs. Uh, who do you think are the relevant sectors involved in uh, managing or dealing with this issue? Well, it's usually the, um, the Department of Health or the Ministry of mm -hmm. Health in the country. Um, they're usually um, the ones who um, come up with plans for preventing a leptospirosis or giving out a leptospirosis um, prophylaxis. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think they need to be working with or collaborating with anyone else, like for example NGOs? Well, usually there are, for example, international organizations, they don't deal with the issue of uh, prophylaxis. Mm -hmm. um, however, um, it's usually just the Department of Health or the Ministry of Health that, that deals with that. Now, the other organizations like the NGOs and the international organization, they could work on um, uh, helping in the surveillance, the disease surveillance. They could also help in um, uh, population awareness um, on lepto leptospirosis, so they could work on, on, that, on that issue with the Department of Health or the Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. uh, before we continue our discussion uh, with Ms. Saleh, we'll be taking a short intervention by phone with Ms. Suraya Zattar Ma'awad, President and Founder of Animal Pride and Freedom. Thanks for joining us, Ms. Ma'awad. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Welcome. So, to, s to start with, do you find that Lebanese and Arabs in general are aware of pet diseases such as leptospirosis? Is the awareness enough in this regard? No, not, not at all, because, you know, you can buy any pet. Hmm? If we start by pet uh, cases, they buy it from uh, any pe illegal pet shops. Uh, uh, these days, there, there is no control. Not even any control about their medical book that that is you know uh, usually uh, done by uh, illegal illegal uh, people or illegal vets. Mm -hmm. So uh, starting from this, you you don't you don't have any uh, sanitary control. So how how can you control any any dangerous uh, bacteria or disease that comes to our country? And you have such a big number of diseases, not only leptospirosis, you know, mm -hmm. uh, as we have uh, uh, exotic uh, birds coming from Africa. We have uh, wild animals that are sold illegally, and they bring with them uh, this kind of uh, bacteria or uh, lots of uh, diseases. Mm -hmm. How dangerous would you say leptospirosis is for pets specifically? Listen, today we have uh, an antidote. We have antibodies, you know, that are uh, applied to any contagious uh, uh, kind of bacteria. Or we have good vets, uh, and 
I think it can be treated if it's caught uh, early. But sometimes, you know, it's a hidden, uh, it's a hidden bacteria. <laughs> it doesn't show any symptoms. And we need to be very, very, uh, uh, you know, we, we need to focus on the hygiene, hygiene. Be very clean, uh, clean very well around and uh, have a clean country. You have the poor, poor sides of the country. You have the poor people and farmers and that lives in, in a kind of muddy, muddy soil, you know. Mm -hmm. And this kind of disease is caught uh, in the muddy, humid uh, climate. Uh, so uh, I think it should start from human behavior. Be clean and uh, be aware. Go to a good set and uh, let our pets uh, be, uh, you know, have all their uh, shots uh, done uh, uh, by uh, serious vets, not illegal uh, pet shops. Mm -hmm. Ministry of Health should also have a focus, you know, an eye on what's coming in our country. And uh, we have this rat problem, you know, rats and mice uh, are the first, uh, first animals uh, that brought this bacteria. And, uh, you know, they call it the Weiss, uh, Weiss disease. It's a German, um, uh, German doctor who uh, discovered it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we have good antidotes and antibiotics. It could be treated. Mm -hmm. So we mentioned previously that the disease is transmitted from the urine of animals to human beings. Uh, but how contagious is leptospirosis? And how worried should pet owners be about the, themselves and their health as well? You know, we have uh, by now six to ten million uh, people who who get contact, uh, you know, who has this disease each, each year. Uh, what we should do is, as I told you, is to avoid to go in, uh, you know, uh, not clean spaces. And uh, we should also have this kind of, uh, uh, you know, cleaning our hands uh, after touching any pet. Avoid to go to pet shops uh, and buy any kind of animals we don't know from from where they are they came and uh, have a good hygiene. Uh, Leptospirosis can be caught, you know, by your urine, by uh, by uh, water, you know. Mm -hmm. If uh, rats and mice, uh, you know, uh, have their their urine in in the water, in the muddy water, and the human being touches it, so he can, uh, you know, uh, catch it uh, via the eyes, via the skin, and uh, we should be very careful, as for uh, many other diseases. Mm -hmm. So a lot of pets suffer from diseases like leptospirosis, but are not treated. What do you think should be done to raise awareness about this issue? Well, first, uh, Ministry of Health should, uh, you know, start a kind of campaign. We can be as NGOs, you know, we can be the porte-parole, we can, you know, help them. And we have the Ministry of Agriculture who should have also focus on that. Uh, because, uh, you know, Lebanon is a, is a traffic, animal traffic, you know. Uh, and and uh, it comes from the underground. It comes, you know, and all these exotic animals that come from Africa. And we have, uh, we have a lot in Africa that uh, hide this kind of bacteria, the, the Leptospira. And uh, so I think they should focus more. And the uh, legislative uh, biotary means vets committee, uh, they are not moving a lot. They are not doing, uh, you know, uh, uh, hard work and serious work. As for, uh, you know, uh, in all kinds of fields in Lebanon, we are not protected. Mm -hmm. So we need to ha have our post parole and speak for, for ourselves and for the animals as NGOs and especially as vets. Before, before selling any pet, please, mm -hmm. please, please, they should give a kind of paper with, uh, you know, all the specifications, what could be done and what could be avoided. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Mawad, for joining us today. We'll be back to our guests in the studio, Ms. Uh, Ms. Saleh. You both mentioned the issue of the Ministry of Health and the importance of the Ministry of Health uh, taking part in this issue. Do you think it's doing enough today, and do you think it will do better in the future? Well, um, till now, it's not a major topic here, and if you're 
if you're talking specifically about Lebanon, it's not a major issue. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't had any cases of, um, I'm not sure, but I, I don't think there are any cases of uh, leptospirosis. But in general, but diseases that we, are... We are, we are prone to, um, mm -hmm. since we're, um, as the doctor mentioned earlier, uh, we live in a human in a humid environment and mm -hmm. we do have a lot of animals. Um, so you, 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 you never know when this might be an issue. Um, so maybe the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Agri Agriculture, um, as uh, the doctor mentioned earlier, um, should take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Thanks to our guests in the studio, Ms. Maj Saleh, for joining us today, and to our guests by phone, Ms. Suraya Zatar Thanks for watching. See you next week.